Hey, my name is Sean. I'm Sean. This is going to be a different type of video. We're going to do a spoilers video with the new cards from Strixhaven. So I just wanted to, the new command cards that were revealed, I think are actually pretty powerful and just wanted to go over them quickly and I think what their potential is. So I've been working on some gameplay videos. I actually had some gameplay recorded, but some stuff happened and I actually ended up wasn't, I sadly was unable to use that gameplay footage. So I... There will, I'm trying to get gameplay out in the in this, if not next week, the week after. So hopefully, going to get that out later. I would also like to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel and just everyone who watches the videos in general. That really, I really appreciate it and thanks. So thank you guys for watching, and if you enjoy, please like and subscribe. Okay, so let's get into this. So these first two commands I feel like have are pretty bad. So we the first one we have is the Orzhov one Silver Quill Command. So its abilities are target creature gets plus three plus three gains flying. Return target creature with converted mana with con mana value to or less. So it's not converted mana cost to or less. It's mana value. Target player draws a card and loses one life, and target opponent sacks a creature. This card is pretty bad. It, I, it's similar to an Earth, I guess, with you can bring back a creature, but on Earth you can bring back a three or less. CMC creature, so it's a little bit even better. Then the target opponent sacrifices a creature, not very good. I believe it was a Zendikar Rising Rare called Soul Shatter that could, for three mana, each opponent sacks a creature. And there's been like Crackling Doom and other effects like that, so it's like just a lot worse than those cards. And then the combat trick ability, not the most relevant, especially not in the CADH, and just in general. And then, like, if it was instant speed, this target player draws a card and loses one life, could be used, potentially, as not, still not really as, like, okay, if you're in Orzhov and you want to stop consultation, and you can go, like, you're gonna respond to, like, the Oracle trigger and make them draw cards, so they lose the game, like, that's interesting, but it's not instant speed, so, yeah, just really bad. This one, I don't know if it's a little bit better, but again, still pretty bad. We have Lore Hold Command. So create a 3-2 three, three, red and white spirit token, creature token. Creatures you control get plus, plus 1 plus 0 oh, and gain indestructible. Uh, deals 3 damage to any target and target player gains 3 life. And then sack a permanent, draw 2 cards. So, it's kind of a weird thing. It's not really that good. Like, you're not really attacking in CDH, so there's not much relevance of it. It does, it's kind of like a lightning bolt, and then gain 3 life for 5 mana, plus, like, none of its abilities are that great. Creating a spirit, not really that good. Sacking a permanent to draw 2 cards, no. It's kind of like the Orzhov, it's pretty expensive at 5 mana, and just doesn't do much, and doesn't have much relevance. Okay, so the next one we have is Wither Bloom Command. It's kind of in, like, the mid-tier of the commands, for me, in my opinion. This one I could see seeing play if you're if you want a similar like abrupt decay effect like you want something like abrupt decay or assassin's trophy, and I think the abilities you probably ch there's three relevant abilities here: target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Not the greatest, especially not at sorcery speed either. But target player mills three cards and you return a land card from your graveyard. So if you're really in on the graveyard strategy, you're playing a really in Golgari strategy, then yeah, this might be a potential card you could use. Destroying tar target non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value two or less is another relevant ability. It hits a lot of the low mana ro low mana rocks like like Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, any of the zero mana rocks, and then some like enchantments it can hit too, like. It could hit a stasis, it could hit a carpet of flowers, then the like, target creature gets minus three, minus one, and this is, I think, where the card is just so close. If it was minus two, minus two, or minus one, minus three, it'd be such a good card. Because with minus three, minus one, you're only really going to ever get to shoot down a dork. Maybe, like, a not very good, like, there's not really much else you can shoot down with minus three, minus one. If it was minus two, minus two, you could kill a lot of stuff, opposition, agent, hold breacher. And then as I said, target opponent loses two life and you gain two life. Not the most relevant. But it's these middle two abilities that if you use this card, it'll be an early game. Kind of, maybe you're playing a soul tie control deck and you want to slow the game down. So you use this to counter one of your opponent's rocks and then destroy one of, the, destroy one of their rocks and then destroy one of their mana dorks. Still, I think this card could see some play in the right deck. And then the, the top ability is relevant in certain builds. And then we're at the like the two th that I'm 
this, the two that I'm most excited for, Prismary Command and the next one. And Prismary Command is like really close to just being a, a better abrade. And so let's go through the abilities. We have deals two damage to any target. Target player draws two card cards, then discards two cards. Target player creates a treasure token and destroy target artifact. And this card is so close to being a better abrade because technically you can cast this for three and then get an artifact for get a treasure. So it really only net like net mana is two. But the biggest problem is unlike a braid, this only deals three damage. This only deals two damage, whereas a braid deals three. So it's like a, this can kill whole breachers, opposition agents. But the biggest creature that you want to have to get up to that three damage is to kill a Dranith Magistrate because that really locks you out of the game if your opponents drop an early one. So I think the biggest thing with uh, this card is yeah, it's it's somewhat good that it kills the the kills uh, a decent number of creatures. So it's like a braid, and you also have this destroy target artifact. And then for three mana, you, you can also like kill a creature, draw two cards. So there's a lot of stuff you can do with it. I think in a non-commander centric like style deck, maybe a maybe a teamer deck, maybe a just uh, just a is it deck that's not as much commander centric and is fine with the inability to deal with a inability to deal with a Dranith magistrate and just wants it for just the, as like a value to, to kill a whole breacher and opposition agent and then draw two cards. Or maybe as a mana fix with the target creature player creature's treasure. So I think it can see some play, but it's mostly gonna be in decks that are less reliant on their less commander heavy. And the one that I'm most I think is most interesting is Quandrix Command. I'm I'm pretty excited for this card. And I think it's the first ability that's most relevant. Return to our creature or planeswalker to its owner's hand. And I actually have Snap as the image for the background of this for that reason. Then it's counter target artifact or enchantment spell. Put two 1 1 counters on target creature. And target sh player shovels up to three target cards in their graveyard into their library. I think this is like the teamer control card, like perfect. It's a dockside doubler, like a snap or an unsubstantiate. It has this somewhat relevant counter spell ability. So obviously, you pay through mana with your dockside out. You, you return dockside to your hand or recast it for more treasures. And then you basically, then and you also get to counter spell. Artifacts are enchantments, not the... If it said non-creature spell, this card would be really good. But artifacts or enchantments are somewhat relevant. A lot of, like, combos, like, maybe it's Isochron Scepter or... Or Food Chain rely on an artifact or enchantment as their main combo piece. So that's a relevant ability. Putting two one one counters, not the greatest. There could be in a combat situation, maybe... But, and then the other one is we have Memory's Journey on this card, which is a playable card if you're, especially if you're going against Graveyard Strategies and you don't want to, uh, you don't want to play Grafter's Cage and impact your own graveyard. So maybe you're playing a four-color deck, you're playing a Green Grixis deck, and you want to, you're playing some Underworld Breach Strategies, but you're also playing Dockside, and so you want to, so you want to both be able to shell up cards from target a player's library and you also want to double your dock size so this card has a lot of functionality it functions in that dock side doubler slot as like unsubstantiated and snap are not functioning right now so sort of a counter spell especially more meta dependent if you're facing a lot of heavy artifact decks maybe you're facing an artifact lock deck like say with like Lavinia or you're facing Isochron Scepter food chain builds then it can be pretty powerful, and then the shuff, then the memories journey is always good against underworld breach decks, because normally with underworld breach, you're kind of there's one main card like you do a lion's eye diamond wheel of fortune under breach line, a grinding station underworld breach line, so it's like if you're able to put that one important card from their graveyard into their library, and it can be really powerful, and that's why I think being an instant speed, this is the best of the command cards and the one that I'm most excited for. Then I just wanted to go over the other three cards that got spoiled. Technically these aren't really new cards, it's just Demonic Tutor, Swords to Plashers, and Opt in their kind of their new masterpiece series, which I'm actually pretty excited for. This is reminding me of the Amonkhet Invocation series where back then I used to play a lot of draft and I actually pulled a Invocation Thought Seize. Still worth a decent amount today. And my biggest problem with that was it was one in every booster crate which I believe is one in every four packs I believe wizards said this was going to be at least one of these in every booster box every booster box which is I guess better 
a little bit disappointed that some of them will be uncommons. But it's always nice to see cards like Demonic Tutor and hopefully more powerful tutor effects. Like worldly like Sylvan Tutor's getting up there. Vampiric Tutor. There's a lot of tutors that have we've seen reprinted. That would be really nice to see reprinted again and like in this in one of these sets because it just increases the amount on the market, obviously not that much. But like the most recent masterpiece expeditions, they have seen a little bit of a price drop. And some of them are actually some of the cheaper versions just due to like foils, like the bad foiling and stuff. So, but yeah. So I'm excited to see these also. Excited to see more reprints because I end up proxying a decent number of cards because I don't want to spend too much money on magic. It's a, it's a hobby. It's something I do for fun, something I like to do competitively, but something that I don't want to spend thousands of dollars on. So yeah, that's going to conclude this video. I wanted to just talk about those command cards because the last three I think are actually really have a lot of potential, especially the last two. In the, in the right strategies, they can be pretty good. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching, and if you and hope you enjoyed.